welcome back to a new vlog. I hope you're all good. So today, lots of us use Goodreads, right? I feel like Goodreads for many years has had a monopoly over reading tracking, but it's old. <laughs> and kind of recognizing that Goodreads had this monopoly over the industry for kind of no reason. There's been a lot of book uh, tracking websites and apps that have sprung up over the past couple of years. And I have tried every single one of them. I've tried every single one of them and I've never been able to make them stick and I don't know why, but I want to change that. So a new app called Literal got in contact with me and wanted to know if we wanted to work together. And I was like, Yes. <laughs> Cause I had a quick look at their website and app and it's so like beautiful and aesthetic. And I was like, okay, this is the one I'm gonna make work for me. Cause when I've tried one before and I haven't stuck with it, I'm like, okay, for some reason we don't gel. But I really wanna make another like alternative book tracking app work for me. So in this video, literal is gonna be picking what I read. So I'm gonna be using the app to kind of determine what I read in this reading vlog, whilst also kind of exploring all of the different features and aspects of the app and kind of reviewing it for you guys. And we're just gonna go through it together. And I'm really excited, but it's obviously also gonna be reviews of the books I'm reading, like a normal reading vlog, but we're gonna explore the app as well. I don't know what to expect, but I think let's just get into it. Okay, so it is, time to choose what the first book I am going to read for this vlog is. I currently on literal only follow three people and that is Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte, Genesis and Victoria who is one of my patrons. So I only follow three people but three people who I think I have pretty similar reading taste to. So I want to do around, I don't want to follow any more people right now, I want to do around where one of them pretty much picks what I read. Whichever book we see first that I own, I'll read. Not, I've read Bunny already, so not gonna be that. Don't own Kingdom of the Cursed. Okay, hold up. <laughs> Cut the cameras. Dead ass. I own Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer, but I want it to be, usually when I do these kind of videos, it has to be a book someone's reviewed, not like a want to read. When someone's like, I want to read this book, it has to be a book someone's reviewed. So we're not gonna pick that. I don't own one of us is like, oh! <gasps> ah! Oh my God, okay, that's so exciting. Oh my God. Ah, I own The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. So we're gonna read that. And I am just, I am so excited. Oh my God, I have read two Riley Sagers and I've always wanted to read The Last Time I Lied and I own it somewhere in this mess of books. Don't even talk to me right now. We don't, by the time this video comes out, hopefully I think it will all be sorted. But as of filming this clip, no, it is not. So Victoria gave it four stars, said it was intense, intense, intense. I love these little markers, these little descriptions for the books. Intense, okay. Am I ready for an intense book? I think I am. Oh, okay. Olivia read it also and gave it three stars. Interesting, interesting. Other people have described it as page turning, unforgettable, surprising, unpredictable. Oh my God, it's Zoe. Hi, Zoe. <laughs> Wait, I need to follow Zoe. <laughs> Okay, I am gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go find The Last Time I Lied and I am gonna start reading it. And I'm excited. I don't even know what the plot is, so I'll chat to you about the plot when I come back next. So the days became weeks, it felt just like the night before. You were slowly fading in my mind. When you left, I was so completely gone. Okay, currently I'm about halfway, I think just over halfway through the last time I lied. I I haven't really read in like a week. <laughs> Why is my chest red? Sometimes my chest just does that, please ignore that. Um, sometimes I just go red. I've been struggling to read for the past week. Me on the inside. Right now, life couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I just go through stages like this where time just escapes me. <laughs> and I don't end up reading, but I started the audiobook for this yesterday because I was like, I need to actually read this book. I start the audiobook and I'm loving the audiobook. The narrator is amazing. She has kind of like a, 
unusual accent. I'm struggling to place it. I don't know where it would where it'd be like, but the way that she sounds something, she's American, but the way she sounds something sounds kind of British. And I really like that accent. I find her accent quite relaxing, <laughs> which isn't exactly what you want from a thriller, but anyway. I'm really enjoying it though. I would say I'm enjoying it as much as Lock Every Door, which was like a four. I think Home Before Dark by Riley Sager was like a 3.5. That lock every door was like a four and this is what I'm feeling about this one. So in it we are basically following this woman who was at this camp I think about 15, 13, 15 years ago and the girls that she was rooming with and was friends with at the summer camp went missing. They were never seen again, their bodies were never found and she feels a lot of responsibility for what happened and she is invited back to the camp 15 years later to kind of be a mentor. It's reopening for the first time in all this time and she's invited back and the, I don't trust these rich bitches who are in the camp. I don't trust this family. It feels, it feels like there's something sour going on in this family. Rich people, I feel like there's always something sour going on. So I don't trust these bitches. <laughs> Every character in this book. I said it because I was letting you know what time it was. And what time is it? What time it was was I'm a very it rich bitch. Time. And the reason it's called The Last of My Life is because there's kind of like a theme of lying throughout it and we kind of learning that she was very close in particular to one of the girls who went missing and she kind of taught her like how to manipulate truth and lies. Not manipulate, that's not the right word, but like, you know, she taught her to view that in a different way to kind of get what she wanted is my understanding but she feels a lot of guilt around the situation for a reason we don't really know yet so there's a lot of intrigue a lot of mystery going on and I'm really loving the setting of this kind of outside summer camp rural like you can feel like the the bugs buzzing around the lake and like I feel like it's very atmospheric and why do you know I feel like all of Riley Sega's books have kind of been like atmospheric so it must be something that he does well because I'm really enjoying that aspect of it I think our main character is very interesting I'm really loving the flashbacks it's like a good thriller so far I would really recommend the audiobook though because that's what like got me into it I found the first like 20 pages not very like it didn't hit me it didn't get me until we went to the camp and then i was like okay i'm in this i'm in this shit so i'm so happy that like this vlog has made me pick up this book because otherwise it would have taken me forever to read it and now i'm actually really excited i'm gonna try and finish it today i just want to let you guys know we're gonna be talking about literal obviously throughout this whole vlog but you can import your whole of your goodreads library into literal so easily it did it so well for me which i think often holds some people back from starting these new kind of apps because you're like, well, I've got this whole history over here, but it imports it all with all the dates, all the different shelves, which is the best thing. Cause not all, not all the ones who have said they can import my goodness library have actually imported all my custom shelves. That is the most important thing for me. Some just import like what books you've read, but literal imports all your custom shelves, which I think is amazing. So I'm gonna show you quickly, if I go on library, and then I click on all books, I can then see all my different shelves and it's kept them all. And I feel like literal shelving system is better than Goodreads. Goodreads like took me a while to figure out, but I feel like making new shelves, like it's literally create a shelf, give a name, add description, create a shelf. It's way easier. I feel like the Goodreads one was a bit complicated. Like it took me a while to figure it out. So now for instance, like when I'm doing TBR Cluedo, I need to see what books I've got in specific genres. I can easily go to that and see all the different books I own in that genre. And it's super helpful. So yeah, I love the shelving system. It's super easy to use. 49 2021 releases owned. Besties, that's that's actually, that's actually a problem. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. I also really like being able to see on how many other shelves the books are saved on. I think the design and the aesthetic and the kind of thought that's gone into the design of Literal is amazing. So yeah, if you're worried about importing Goodreads, it's super easy to do. So that's like a great thing about it. So I'm gonna go do some more work today. I've got a few more things to do and then I'm gonna come back tonight and hopefully finish this. I'm really excited. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook now whilst I have, I've got a little bit of work I can do while I listen to the audiobook, but most of what I've got to do today I can't. But I feel like I'm excited for kind of shit to hit the fan a bit. I'm excited for it to get a bit like crazier is what I'm wanting in, in this last half. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, Check out they've labels. blessed me. <laughs> there were so many twists and turns in this. I was making dinner the last night and I was listening to your audiobook and there was a moment that I went, <gasps> <laughs> like I never do that. And the thing is, I listened to almost all of this via the audiobook. I pretty much almost read it exclusively via the audiobook. And in that moment, basically without spoiling anything, you were kind of being led to think one thing was happening and then it turned out something else was happening. I think often my eyes stray around the page, shall we say? And I end up looking at other shit on the page, right? And if that had been the case, if I'd been reading this physically, I would have spoiled it for myself, right? I would have spoiled it accidentally, but like you see other words on the page. But listening to the audiobook, I had no idea until that final line was said. And I was like, <gasps> and it was more than I was like, <gasps> it was. <laughs> it is brilliant American literature. And I don't care what anybody, it is. It's lit, it should be taught in schools. <laughs> It was so good. And that's when I think audiobooks are the best. They're really good for when, like, for the unexpectedness. Do you know what I mean? So, needless to say, I loved this. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars. Now, here's the thing. This is what I love about this for having half stars. This is, like, genuinely, like, I just... <laughs> I feel like half stars are a necessity because when I'm writing a book on, like, Goodreads, for example, and there's not half stars, I would have like, listen, it, it did take me a little moment to like, you know, think about whether it should be five stars or 4.5, but I would often think, you know, it's a 4.5, but I don't want to give it five stars, like as the rating, even if I'm going to say 4.5 stars, because I want that to be like my exclusively my favorite books. But then sometimes they may, I may think like, oh, come on, what a different, what much of a difference is it? It's better for the author if you can give five stars. So sometimes I've just given five stars to books that arguably are a 4.5. And I feel like having the option to just give half stars completely changes the way I think about my ratings and what ratings I'm going to give. I feel like it changes my mindset because even like on goodreads if i'm rating a book i will type 3.5 stars whatever and rate it a three or a four in the function but i feel like having the, the star system the half star system available makes me think differently and makes me maybe make sometimes a better decision in what i'm doing so anyway all that to say i really loved it i thought this had amazing twists and turns oh and then the, ah, i didn't mention the end the end which you just saw me reading you guys. <laughs> I was thinking to myself as I was coming up to the end, I was like, okay, we need a last, like a page, last page twist, which I don't always love. There's been a few books, a few, a few thrillers where I'm like, oh, I hate when it does that. I hate when it does that because I hate when a last page twist completely changes the context of everything, everything that we've read without really explaining like what it actually means. Does that make sense? Like, I hate when it, it makes everything we've read a lie without actually like explaining what this actually then means for everything that we've read. Whereas this didn't do that. It the curve at the end was perfect. I did not I did not see it coming. I was ooing, I was awing, I was wincing, I was LOLing quite heartily. It was like the perfect twist and I was gagged, I was gooped, I was living, I was living for it. I was living for it. This is my favorite Riley Sager I've ever read. And I don't feel like you hear about it spoken about as much. Like I feel like Lock Every Door is spoken about way more and that was good, but this had better twists and it's so atmospheric. The setting at this summer camp was so like magnetic and like electrified is how I would explain it. The, oh, I can't get into it, but all the different kind of settings we moved into as the book went on, I just thought were incredible. So I am so happy that because of this video, I read this book. Otherwise, like I said, I would have read it like 10 years in the future. So 
To pick the next book, we're gonna go explore Literal's book clubs, which I'm very excited about. So they have book clubs. They have so many. You can create your own book clubs with your friends, or it can be like a big, wide scale thing. So you open, you go to clubs here, explore clubs, and there's loads of different types. I had a little scroll through before. Cozy readers, the queer quest, books of horror, cookbooks. <laughs> Too many tears, oh, thriller time, oh. Students of Academia. So I don't know what I'm gonna pick because I'm gonna go into one of these and whichever book has been reviewed most recently, I'm gonna read Aesthetics. Ooh. But it has to be a book I own. So the most recent book that's been reviewed that I own. Oh, writing with us, that's fun. I don't think this, I'm gonna join this club. Oh, this sounds fun. So like you can create posts as well. Like in this one, as you can see, there's posts about like writing tips and stuff. Ah, oh, like writing advice. Wow, this is so cool. I didn't even know there was this one. Okay, I'm gonna explore that one later, but we need to find out what book I'm gonna be reading. Just read a thriller, so I don't know if I wanna go into thriller time. There are more book clubs than just this, by the way. There's loads of other ones, but this is kind of like the hand-picked recommendations. Let's go into the queer quest. Or I can go into the books. I don't any own any of those three. So there are the books that have been reviewed, yeah, for this club. So I don't own any of those, so we're not reading them. Do I want horror? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Okay, too many tears. Again. Oh, me before you. Nope. No. Nope. There's none there that I own that I haven't already read. Um, aesthetics. Let's go into this. Oh yeah, maybe you find yourself cut up in your bed with a warm beverage on your nightstand and want to read a book that feels just like that or matches the fresh air and chirpy birds outside during spring. Girl, you have sold me. I am sold. The Inheritance Games don't own it, but I want to read it. Red, brown, royal, blue have read it. Ninth house have read it. Red, royal, blue have read it. <gasps> no! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. No! It's bit. No! Oh, this is a big book. <laughs> Okay, so Blake reviewed The Once and Future Witches, gave it four stars, remarkable, page-turning, powerful, intelligent, deep. Okay, we're gonna read this. I don't know much about the plot other than it's about witches and sisters. Okay, here's the thing. One of my patrons, Charlie, I know you're watching, loves this book and has been telling me to read it for ages, so this is for you. Um, oh my god, hang on, it's right here, isn't it? Yes, it's right here. Well, I listen, I'm hoping this is a quick read. We are going to be reading The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. So I have this gorgeous Illumicrate edition of it. And yeah, I'm excited. We're going to learn about what it's about together. I have got Patreon live sprints in a few hours. So I'll probably start it in that. But oh my god, oh my god. I can't believe it. <laughs> okay, we're reading this. the corn grow in the fields I don't know what's on your mind but I know that it's something about you and me I'll stay here for besties no 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 screaming crying going up screaming crying i cannot take it i actually can't take it i can't take it i refuse i'm abdicating i'm not I'm... god what's going on guys where's the cheers man yeah <laughs> that fix so <laughs> what the hell's going on i'm loving it oh i'm loving it i'm loving it I don't think I was prepared to love it this much. I'm flying through it, right? I've only been reading it today and I'm halfway through, I'm on page 250. It is currently five o'clock in the afternoon and I'm hoping to like get through pretty much the rest of the book tonight. Besties, I am crying, I am crying. So listen, it's amazing. <laughs> Basically, we're following these three sisters in 1893 in New Salem as they get reunited after seven years apart. And it's basically them discovering their witchy powers and using it to bring justice for women. That is very tied up in like trying to get the vote for women as well. And but it's it's more just about the magic coursing through this story. It's, 
I actually can't explain it to you. It feels a bit like a fever dream. It reminds me very much of like some of my favorite authors like Lainey Taylor, Erin Morganson. It's very Erin Morganson. I mean, Lainey Taylor blurbs at the front. So it's like, oh, oh, oh. Calm down. Calm down. It's like ferocious and like, you know, one of our main characters has so much anger and our characters have so much hurt, but they use that to fuel the magic. It's like incredible. I immediately went and put all of Alexi Harris' other books like on my wish list and want to read everywhere because I was like, listen, listen. <laughs> it's definitely reminding me a lot of Strange Case, The Alchemist Daughter as well. Like um, our, I would say almost the main character, although all the three sisters are kind of main characters, but the younger sister, Juniper, definitely reminds me of Diana from The Strange Case, The Alchemist Daughter, and kind of like the roughness and the anger and the like bolshiness of, of them. So they definitely remind me of each other. But I don't know, the discussions on women's rights and what it meant to be a woman at this time and the, the tough choices that you had to make and how difficult it was. I'm just absolutely loving it. I cannot tell you how happy I am that I am I have read this all of a sudden. Like, it would have taken me years to read this otherwise, just like last time I lied. So that's obviously what this video is proving to be good for. I don't think I can convey to you how beautifully written it all is. Like, oh, it just it just paints the most wonderful images with words. Sometimes these books, they're, they're heavy, right? This is why I don't know when I'm gonna reread The Sala Sea because it's so heavy with this beautiful lyrical writing that I feel like it can be a bit intimidating. So there's moments where I'm having to be like, okay, make sure you're understanding all this, Megan, and not just letting like the beautiful words wash over you. But yeah, I'm loving it. I'm halfway through. I already know I'm gonna read all of Alexi Harrow's other stuff. It's just like tied up in childhood and nursery rhymes and, and family and oh! I feel like today the future starts. So it's a good day. I want to show you another super cool feature that Literal has tied into how many beautiful quotes there are in this book. So basically, if you go onto highlight here, you can add a quote that you really love. So I typed out one earlier, so it'd be quicker here. <laughs> so I can copy and paste it. This is one of my favorite quotes. I actually got chills when I read this. Or perhaps for all of them, for the little girls thrown in cellars and the grown women sent to workhouses, the mothers who shouldn't have died and the witches who shouldn't have burned, for all the women punished merely for wanting what they shouldn't. Are you gagged? Are you gagged? I love this feature. So look how cute it is with a little line next to it. I don't know. I'm in love with this book. Excuse me? Um, I can't remember what page it's on. I'm gonna publish that. Oh, look at my little highlight. And then if I want, you can share it to Twitter, which I'm gonna do. Firstly, I just love how they look on the app. I think they look so cute. Oh, look at the, oh, I just love, I just love it. I just love it. I think it's such a cute feature. Oh, I love how, I love how it appears on Twitter. Doesn't that look so cute? Oh, it looks so cute. So people scrolling through Twitter see it like that. So yeah, I absolutely love the highlight feature on this tour. I think it's such a cute feature and I love scrolling through and like seeing little quotes that other people have highlighted. So anyway, I am gonna go read the second half of this. I Literally, it's all I wanna do this evening. I was gonna try and edit some of this video, but I'm like, that is gonna be tomorrow's problem. I am just going to read this book. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I'm so happy. I'm very unhappy. Listen, I'm giving it five stars. I'm giving it five stars. It is one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year, but it feels like I didn't really experience it. Like I feel like I need to read this oh, five times because there's so many words. There's so many words in this book. Like, I don't understand. There's, how does Alexi Harrow know this many words? How, how, how are there this many words and it's Alexi Harrow's brain? I don't understand. But anyway, I, I loved it. The ending, whoo, I didn't believe certain things were gonna happen and then they did. And I was like, hang on, hang on. And then it just, <laughs> On that breaking point, 
I almost cried. I was doing my makeup as I listened to the end of it via the audiobook and I almost cried. I was doing my eyeliner and I was like, sis, you gotta hold it in. Whatever you gotta do, you just can't cry. Even though I wanted to cry because I love crying at books and I love that like emotional release. It's one of those books where I love it so much that I, I don't have words. <laughs> Like, this book is beyond me. I can't review it because it's beyond everything that I I know. It was incredible. Why did it take me this long to read it? Why did it... Bye. I just... The prose in this is incredible. The familial relationships in this are incredible. The storytelling, the way that the story flows is incredible. Like, oh, ah! <laughs> Some books you read and you feel the plot points, right? You, fl you feel the plot beats, but this is just like, just a smooth journey of beautifulness and gorgeousness. I just loved it. I just thought it was absolutely incredible. I need to reread it immediately because like I said, it's such, it, again, it's very similar to how I feel about The Starless Sea. Like it's so beyond and everything else like it's so beyond everything else that I've read like I genuinely can't review it for you like I listen I don't know when I'll be able to but this is like <sighs> my guys my guys like this is hard it's a beautiful story it has so much to be learned about you know feminism and women's rights and the thoughts that it had about hu humanness and like life in general went so beyond anything that I feel like other books come up with. Like, I feel like it was so clever in the stuff that it was saying. It was just gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful and you all need to read it. Like, if you haven't read this yet, you need to read it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I- you're gonna have to wait to my wrap up for me to form coherent words about this because I just can't. I just can't. I actually just can't. I'm sorry to be a failure, but I can't. I actually- I can't. <laughs> Final thoughts on Literal as an app, I absolutely love it. I feel like I have been using it so seamlessly and easily. Like I said, with other apps like this, I've struggled to use it. Like I've kind of imported my books in maybe or put some books in and then I've never used it. But I find the review section really, really good on Literal. Like it, the reviews don't seem daunting. I feel like on Goodreads, you you feel like you're expected to write like a fucking essay because that's what everyone does. I don't like that. <laughs> Whereas on literal, you know, it's it feels smaller, it feels more compact, it feels just less intimidating to write a review for. So I really love that aspect of it. There are, of course, things I would love to see on the app that it doesn't currently have, but it's very much in its infancy, in its early stages. On their website, you can find a list of things that they could add to the app that people have suggested and you can suggest things that you may want added to the app. And it shows you which ones are in progress or which ones they're planning to add. So this app is constantly evolving and things are constantly being added. For example, I would love to have stats on there, like reading statistics, even though that is something I track myself. Um, I like the website I use to have it as well. That is something that has been suggested and upvoted a lot. So hopefully they'll add that at some point. So go have a look at that. I'll have put some on the screen because things are gonna keep, why am I holding the book up? Things are gonna keep being added to the app but I really, really loved it. So I'm gonna leave my link down below. I'm gonna leave a link where you can join. I'll also leave my profile link down below. I'm gonna be following everyone back on there who joins to kind of grow my circle because it's a very small one at the moment. So make sure you go down there and join and um, follow me and I'll follow you back on there. And thank you again to Literal for sponsoring this video. It has been so kind of wonderful of them, but obviously all my views were not affected by um, the fact that I was sponsoring this video. I just wanted to try the app out and give it a go. So yes, I hope you're all good. If you've gone to the end of this video, leave a a flower emoji for this gorgeous cover. Leave any flower emoji if you've gotten to the end and I'll speak to you soon in a new video. Bye!